call to order the King County Council's Employment and Administration Committee meeting for Monday, August 18th, 2020, and ask our clerk to please call the roll. Thank you, Madam Chair. Councilmember Dimbowski. Councilmember Dunn. Councilmember Colwells. Councilmember Council Wells is in Skype right now. Hi. Okay. Oh. oh, thank you. <laughs> Council I'm Member here. Lee. I thought we were going to Skype. We will be momentarily, but uh, oh, okay. okay. Councilmember Lambert. Councilmember McDermott. Here. Councilmember Up the Grove. Here. Councilmember Von Wrightbauer. Here. Councilmember Zahalai. Here. Madam Chair. Here. Madam Chair, you have seven of nine members. Council members Dunn and Lambert are currently excused. All right. Uh, we are here today for a follow-up discussion related to a personnel investigation. Uh, members will recall we've been briefed on the investigation and presented with recommendations for possible disposition. Uh, our next step is going to be to determine the final disposition related to this matter. I hope we can accomplish this task today. Uh, this is the only action we will be working on today, and it will be a recommendation from this committee to the full council, presumably. Um, council members may want to make additional recommendations. But we're going to go for the first part of this discussion into executive session. A reminder to everyone watching and all involved that no votes uh, may be or will be taken in executive session. And uh, the grounds for the executive session under RCW 42.30.110 are to review the performance of a public employee. The committee will be in executive session for approximately 30 minutes until about three, I wanna say 32 minutes until about 3.40. Um, I'm going to ask the clerk to post a notice to this virtual meeting to that effect. Uh, we will leave the Zoom call to committee members and only necessary uh, county employees, or such as I should say, and only county employees directly necessary for the discussion will leave the Zoom call and enter the Skype call as just demonstrated by somebody, ably demonstrated. <laughs> uh, the Skype call will be where we have hold the executive session. So please sign off of this Zoom call when you uh, sign into Skype and we'll come back out of executive session into this call for our final uh, discussion and any action. Hope that makes sense. We'll see you over in the Skype call and executive session uh, through about 340. It's the Employment Administration Committee meeting, we have been in executive session for approximately, well, just under an hour um, on a matter of uh, personnel. So members, um, oh, you're not gonna share, okay. Would you prefer I share? Yeah, it would be best. Okay. So I'm going to call on uh, Vice Chair of the Council, uh, Joe McDermott. On my behalf, would you please put before us this proposed mission of the investigation? Thank you, Madam Chair. I move adoption of the um, proposed disposition dated August 18th, 2020. Disposition of an investigation of Office Law Enforcement Oversight Director Deborah Jacobs. Thank you. I will speak to it. So this is my proposal uh, as the chair of EAC, and it does three things. It uh, recommends to the full, well, uh, number one is in our, our authority as a committee. Uh, so it accepts the findings in Karen Sutherland's report, including that uh, Deborah Jacobs engaged in discriminatory and inappropriate conduct in violation of the policies as set forth in her investigative report dated July 6, 2020. It probably should say in the investigative report because that her refers to the wrong person. Uh, 
Number two is a recommendation to the full council because this next item is in the is in the authority of the full council. And it says that the EAC recommends the full council adopt by motion that Deborah Jacobs should not be reappointed. And then the third item is in the authority of the EAC and would direct the chief of staff to inform affected employees of the results of the investigation and to monitor to make sure there's no retaliation against any person. Um, so I'm paraphrasing, but you can see it before you on the screen. Uh, I, there is an amendment that is being proposed by council member up the Grove. And at this time, I would like to call on him to offer the amendment. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would move that the substitute committee disposition be adopted. Okay, it's before us, I uh, wanna to speak to it. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this uh, substitute disposition would make a change to item number two in it and would replace the sentence that speaks to not reappointing Ms. Jacobs with a sentence that reads as follows. As part of the reappointment process, the EAC recommends the full council consider the findings, their context, and Ms. Jacobs' full body of work. Um, my experience interacting with Ms. Jacobs has led me to believe that she is honest, ethical, incredibly hardworking. Uh, I found her to be someone who genuinely values and has committed her professional life to gender and racial equality. She's done what this council expects of the leader of this office, which is to fearlessly represent the public interest, which is the council's interest, in the very, very difficult task of trying to improve accountability in a law enforcement agency that fights and resists her at every turn. And as a result, she's, she has taken the slings and arrows for us, and she has taken the slings and arrows for the families of police shooting victims. And it's one of the many reasons she's so respected in the community. Uh, and so while I accept the findings of the investigation and agree she used poor judgment and some comments that violated our internal policies, we need to keep that in context and consider her full record before, before making a decision on reappointment. And one final point, uh, I hope I live to see the day when law enforcement officers are held accountable to the same high standards that we're holding our civilian staff that oversee them. And I encourage your support. Okay. Any other comments? Uh, Dembowski. Catherine Dembowski. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And this is a really <laughs> tough one, uh, but I really appreciate Councilmember Up the Grove's approach. I have uh, stated from the beginning that I think uh, the uh, employment committee's disciplinary action should be kept separate from the appointment or reappointment decision and his uh, a proposed approach goes in that direction. So it's, I don't think any surprise to anyone on the committee that I, I would support it. Um, in, in addition to supporting the approach of Councilmember Up the Grove, I want to align myself uh, with his remarks. I think they were well stated and, and present my views as well. Um, I do think that um, Ms. Jacobs uh, has been a, a strong leader. The reports coming out of the office have been really good, have advanced the cause while she has been handcuffed uh, with respect to the ability to do what the voters want this to do and what our council has adopted in legislation. Uh, but notwithstanding those uh, barriers, she's really advanced the work that repeatedly county voters and the council uh, have sought. Um, I would, with respect to discipline, take the approach recommended by our chief of staff, Carolyn Bush, and her recommendation, um, and uh, leave the appointment reappointment decision to it to the council uh, separately. Uh, the charter does say uh, that the director of the Office of Law Enforcement Oversight is appointed for a term of four years and continues, in effect, in the job until a replacement is there. And I think the voters put that language in there because of the importance of the office. Um, I'm certainly open to seeing if there's someone better, but what I'm worried about, if we don't adopt the Up the Grove approach, is that the office could be left uh, rudderless or hobbled um, during this really important time. And uh, I think the charter language was designed specifically to prevent that. So we would have stability there. Um, 
and I'm worried about uh, vacancy and the time it will take to conduct a nationwide search as required by the charter for any replacement. So I think uh, Council Member Arthur Grove, it's, which is, I think, consistent with my view of him, he takes these things seriously and, and cautiously and is, and is advancing an approach that I prefer here. So I, I, I'd be supportive of it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Council Member Demelski. Further comments? Madam Chair. Council Member Lambert. Thank you. I just want to express my concern um, for comments made that the sheriff fights us at every turn, um, that there have been many, many changes and um, great leadership as well as being done with not enough money um, for the many mandates that we put on that office, nor enough FTEs. And programs like Radar, I think, are a really good example of some innovative programs. So I just wanted to express that that was a concerning remark. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any yeah. other comments? Councilmember Cole Wells, did I hear you speak up? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to also uh, give appreciation to the uh, language that Councilmember Uptergrove has pro provided and proposed. I'm very pleased overall with Deborah Jacobs' performance in her position. I think it's really been in many ways a no-win situation, a very challenging position. But I do have concerns, a lot of concerns about what was determined in the findings in the investigation by Karen Sutherland as included in her report, and that there were um, there was a complaint uh, issued by staff of Olio. I take that very seriously. But I would like to note that as we vote on this matter, that uh, I think Deborah Jacobs should be recognized for all that she did, but this is a separate issue. We're, we're dealing with a complaint or more complaints by a staff in her jurisdiction. It's not, for me, it's not a matter of uh, wanting to uh, go ahead with a search for a new uh, director for Olio in that that has anything to do with her, I thought, very strong performance in her role, but rather with regard to the complaints that had come before us. So with that, I wanted to make sure that my position is known here and the reason why I'll be voting as I will. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll say a word uh, before calling for uh, final comments from the maker of the motion uh, and a vote on the amendment. Uh, the reason I proposed the language that I did in the proposed disposition is because uh, as I went through the process of deliberating on the uh, complaints that have come before us and my own perception from where I've sat the last almost five years now on the performance of Olio, this has been hard, right? Because I think most everything that most everybody has said is true. Both of these things are true, that we have had some outstanding progress in terms of uh, moving forward on law enforcement accountability. Uh, and we have some ways to go, like uh, we've discussed at these meetings um, before uh, that, and at council meetings, more, more to the point than these meetings, that you know we lack some of the tools and we'll be talking about that as the charter goes forward uh, in November, the charter amendments. But we also have got now reports uh, from this investigation, from other things that have happened of really, you know, lapses in judgment and some activities that are not okay. And we need to, in my opinion, walk our talk, have a respectful and supportive working environment for the folks who are working in this difficult office and working with this office and uh, and the fact that we have come to the end of a four-year term gives us the opportunity to choose to select new leadership without it being a matter of disciplinary action. And that is why I made the proposal I did. 
and I uh, intend to stand by that proposal, but I'll just share with you all that this isn't an easy decision. And I, and I understand my colleagues who have very principled decisions that would go in a different direction. So council member up the girl, would you like to say anything to close? No, thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, with that, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll on this amendment, this substitute uh, disposition. Thank you, Madam Chair. Council member Dembowski. Aye. Council member Dembowski oh. votes aye. Council member Dunn. No. Councilmember Dunn votes no. Councilmember Colwells. Aye. Councilmember Colwells votes aye. Councilmember Lambert. No. Councilmember Lambert votes no. Councilmember McDermott. No. Councilmember McDermott votes no. Councilmember Up the Grove. Aye. Councilmember Up the Grove votes aye. Councilmember Von Wright Bauer. Councilmember Von Wright Bauer. No. Councilmember Von Wright Bauer votes no. Councilmember Zahalai? No. Councilmember Zahalai votes no. Madam Chair? No. Madam Chair votes no. Madam Chair, the vote is three ayes. Councilmember Dembowski, Colwells, and Up the Grove, and six noes. Okay, uh, that amendment does not carry, and we'll go back to the original disposition. Are there any other amendments? Um, Madam Chair, Councilmember Dombowski here. I have a par parliamentary inquiry. Sure. Um, I would like to vote yes to accept the findings in paragraphs noted in paragraph one. Paragraph two seems to present a different question with respect to reappointment. And my parliamentary inquiry is, would a motion to divide the question be in order? a really good question and I'm not a good enough parliamentarian to know. Let me ask for some okay. help. I think the other our option may be, can you hear me? It would be our attorney <laughs> or our clerk, whoever knows the best. Or the other option may be to propose a, another substitute disposition. Is, um, Hold on. I, I would be inclined to not split the question. I think this is the, this is the the disposition that I'm proposing, but the council member has asked a procedural question as to whether, uh, I'm sorry, say again, what you asked council member Dombowski. Yeah, so I, and I may be just, a, a, may be privileged, but I'd like to split the question and just adopt uh, one and three, which are the findings, and I would be supportive of that. But with respect to two, um, you know, that, that seems like a different question, but, and it, it, I think it may be a privileged question to be able to split them and just vote no on that. I don't want to have to have a new piece of paper, <laughs> you know, but I think if, if, if I understand the parliamentary procedure, the majority of votes on both of those would actually carry the ultimate decision and representation of the council and would probably, if I'm reading the room rights, lead to adoption of the document, Madam Chair, but members like myself would be able to then be on the record on with respect to to two, so I don't know. So the, yeah, I, I think that's what we just did with the with the amendment. But I'm asking the question to our lawyer: is the is is a motion to split the question? I don't know that there's a question to be split here. That's my it's a it's a proposal that I've proposed. There doesn't appear to be a question to split. I think the best process would be to propose a substitute disposition that does not include number two. But I agree with council member Balducci. That's kind of what we just did. So I thought the purpose of a parliamentary uh, splitting of the question was be able to be able to record the separate subsidiary votes uh, on the different issues. Seems to me those are two different items, but I uh, am not the parliamentarian. Yeah. I apologize for not uh, being as up to scratch on my I I wish I were too. Uh, <laughs> I was just looking for a way to be able to, uh, you know, move us forward without more delay, but being but, but, but able to put our positions on. I think you've stated your position very well. There we go. <laughs> you know what? Let's go with that, Madam Chair. <laughs> okay. I would draw. Okay, so I didn't make a motion. It was just an inquiry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Uh, with this in front of us, uh, I'm not hearing any other amendments being offered. I think I've already spoken to uh, what this says and what my rationale is. Does anyone else want to speak to this before we 
call for a vote. Up the Grove? Council Member Up the Grove. Thank you, Madam Chair. Much like the previous speaker, I wanted to affirm uh, my support for items one and three in the committee disposition um, and ensure that my, um, uh, my vote on final passage is reflective of my belief that uh, uh, that I don't, I'm not prepared today to vote to not reappoint, but I didn't want um, that vote to signal that I did not agree with points one and three, which I do. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Member Grove. Anyone else? Okay, I'll ask the clerk to please call the roll. Thank you, Madam Chair. Council Member Dombowski. Uh, no. Council Member Dombowski votes no. Council Member Dunn. Aye. Councilmember Dunn votes aye. Councilmember Colwells. Aye. Councilmember Colwells votes aye. Councilmember Lambert. Aye. Councilmember Lambert votes aye. Councilmember McDermott. Aye. Councilmember McDermott votes aye. Councilmember Up the Grove. Nope. Councilmember Up the Grove votes no. Councilmember Von Wright Bauer. Aye. Councilmember Von Wright Bauer votes aye. Councilmember Zahalai. Aye. Councilmember Zahalai votes aye. Madam Chair. Aye. Madam Chair, the vote is seven ayes and Council Member Zimbowski and up the Grove voting no. All right, by our vote, we have approved the recommended disposition. The uh, portions of it that are to go to the council will be on a future council agenda. That is the only item on our agenda for East, uh, for the Employment and Administration Committee today. Is there any other business to come before the committee? Seeing none, we will be adjourned. Thank you, everybody.